Hello and welcome to this keynote talk on environmental sensing in megacities. My name is Sasu Tarkoma and I'm a professor at the University of Helsinki. My talk will give an overview of our Megasense research program. Megasense is a multidisciplinary program building on computer science, atmospheric sciences and geosciences aiming for clean air and clean environment. Our uh, starting point is to uh, understand urban air quality and uh, as we know uh, air pollution is a growing concern, a very significant problem for human health and for planetary health as well. And uh, we uh, approach this by developing uh, air quality monitoring uh, networks. So we uh, would want to have uh, low-cost monitoring networks and uh, then uh, through uh, these networks gain a uh, very good understanding that uh, what is happening pertaining to the chemical cocktail of uh, urban environments and then uh, develop ways to mitigate their pollution and uh, thus to uh, promote health and well-being uh, in urban areas. And this is a very significant challenge. Uh, it's estimated that uh, by 2050, two-thirds of the global population will live in cities and hundreds of millions of people will live in megacities. So uh, the air pollution problem is very significant and uh, we need new ways of measuring and then mitigating air pollution. And uh, for uh, the urban uh, air pollution, so we have the two cases. So we have outdoor ambient air quality and pollution, and then we have indoor environment as well. And since we spend most of our times indoors, indoor air quality is very important, but uh, we also have to understand outdoor air quality and together they uh, uh, then complete the picture that what is air quality in the urban environment and where we have uh, the pollution hotspots and problems. And our aim is to understand these hotspots and also understand the temporal and spatial variability of uh, air pollution, especially uh, in the outdoor environment. And uh, to this end, we have been investigating low-cost consumer-grade sensors, IoT, Internet of Things sensors, and uh, then developing uh, both uh, the platform and then various uh, machine learning methods for then analyzing the data and uh, then uh, eventually providing insights and then uh, tools for decision making in order to make the environment cleaner. And uh, there are many areas that we need to cover here. So one is uh, the early warning, so that we uh, detect uh, high levels of pollution in certain areas, certain times, and uh, we warn about these and then mitigate these, these problems. Uh, then uh, we would want to detect patterns in pollution over time. And uh, with this, we can then uh, provide uh, clean uh, environment navigation, for example, so that we provide uh, healthier routes uh, for people to travel in urban environments. Uh, and then, uh, so by leveraging these IoT sensors, so, so we can detect also uh, gap areas. So areas in which we don't have uh, sensors yet and for which we don't have data. So we can then uh, instrument sensor campaigns to uh, provide uh, this missing data for the full picture. And we can use also drones uh, to gather more information. So it's a very uh, kind of a rich environment for, for sensing and data analysis. And we see a, that a combination of low-cost sensors and then a higher grade instruments together provide a very good picture of the, of the environment. 
and uh, here you see one of our starting points so we have the uh, high quality reference station in this photo this is from our campus at the University of Helsinki Kumpula campus and uh, we uh, then obtain uh, very uh, high quality ground truth data from uh, such a reference grade instrument and this uh, then uh, this data can be used to uh, improve uh, the data that low-cost sensors provide. So we can calibrate low-cost sensors with this ground truth. And this way we can build trust towards the data that the low-cost instruments provide. And one of our goals is to uh, reduce uh, the cost of these low-cost instruments and then improve their accuracy. And we believe that by uh, leveraging such a hierarchy of sensors always the higher quality sensor helping to calibrate the lower quality sensor we can then approach this goal of uh, achieving cost efficiency while at the same time having uh, trust towards the data that the low cost instruments provide and we have been now working on this uh, hierarchical mesh measurement system and also deploying it. Here you see example uh, data points from Helsinki. We have uh, carried out a number of campaigns and we have built a data platform which uh, then uh, accepts uh, the data provided by the reference grade instruments and the local sensors and then uh, also uh, helps uh, to carry out data analysis. And the platform has this uh, machine learning based calibration capability as a service built in into the platform. And uh, the platform also has edge computing capabilities so we can carry out part of the data processing uh, at the edge of the network on edge servers. And this is something that we see beneficial when we have very high density deployments and also we have for example, uh, hyperspectral camera data uh, being uh, monitored as well. So we can extract uh, air pollution uh, details from hyperspectral images of the uh, sky. So uh, also camera data is uh, useful when analyzing the environment and air pollution. In addition to the platform, we have worked on the low-cost sensors and uh, we have de developed a number of low-cost sensor devices. Here you see one portable device we have designed and deployed. So uh, this device uh, is uh, intended to be carried uh, by citizens, for example, attaching the device to a bag, as you can see here in the picture. And uh, the device uh, monitors uh, a number of uh, parameters and then sends uh, these through the smartphone to the platform. We also have uh, sensor uh, variants that uh, directly send the measurements using 5G, but typically we are using smartphones for localized data processing and then sending the data to the platform. And we have a mobile application uh, for the user. And uh, the uh, sensor device, it's a small form factor. We have designed it to be uh, used outdoors. So airflow design has been taken into account. And uh, the sensor uh, measures typical air quality and environmental parameters. For example, temperature, humidity, air pressure. Uh, we have also, of course, particulate matter, ultraviolet light, uh, we have CO, NO2 and then uh, O3, ozone uh, as well being measured. And uh, the device uh, then uh, sends this to the backend where we do uh, calibration of the, uh, of the data and uh, do any uh, necessary uh, corrections to the data based on the calibration model. And uh, the sensor has been designed uh, for uh, campaigns, so we have carried out a number of campaigns with citizens uh, 
carrying uh, the device. Also, uh, to ensure that uh, the device is working properly, we first, before the campaigns and use of the sensor, we carry out lab-based uh, calibration experiments. So here you see a cloud chamber that has been used for the lab-based calibration and validation of the sensor device. And uh, then uh, when the device is uh, being used, uh, when we have the campaign, then we do uh, the machine learning based calibration. And uh, we have carried out a number of measurement campaigns in Helsinki. We are also carrying out campaigns in other cities as well. So uh, it's a very international uh, piloting activity we have at the moment. But now I will briefly tell you about these uh, campaigns in Helsinki. So uh, we gave 100 of these uh, devices to citizens of Helsinki and uh, they carried the devices and we provided information about the personal uh, air quality and air pollution uh, exposure. And uh, here, here you can see the PM 2.5 air pollution profile for a citizen based on the portable sensor. Air pollution exposure profile records the citizens' air quality in their microenvironment context. And of course, uh, when this context changes, also the microenvironment uh, can change as well. The figure uh, has uh, the PM2.5 measurements during the day for the citizen. And uh, by looking at the figure, we can then uh, identify different microenvironments. Starting from the morning side, on the figure so we can see that uh, we have first indoor residential measurements then we have transport and outdoor microenvironments then we have uh, indoor office microenvironments and uh, then we have uh, transport and outdoor microenvironments again and finally we have indoor residential measurements and we can see that the transport and outdoor activities they have uh, pollution peaks and uh, these uh, pol uh, pollution hotspots, uh, uh, of course, are very interesting and, and uh, important to study and understand. And then we would want to mitigate these and improve uh, the overall uh, air quality and also the exposure situation to air pollution. This data that we can gather based on portable sensors is useful and we can correlate this with health related risks and we can also use this information to design routes that are healthier and cleaner. We can also use the data to analyze microclimates of city districts. Here you can see the air quality profile of Pakila district in Helsinki. You see that we have rectangles of different colors in the figure. Here, greener color means more healthier environment and less pollution. Red color is for more pollution in the figure. By looking at the figure, we see that pollution concentrates near the roads. We also have some pollution hotspots more distant to the roads. In this region, some of these are caused by wood burning due to fireplaces. The sensor campaigns make it possible to study the spatiotemporal properties of hyperlocal pollution hotspots. And uh, based on the data and the models, we have then uh, created a clean air routing uh, tool, so clean air routing service for the citizens. Uh, this is an open source uh, activity, it's available uh, for all and uh, the uh, service, uh, it's a web application, it provides uh, uh, navigation uh, advice, these routes uh, that uh, take uh, air quality, so the pollution into account, but also other environmental properties like audio levels, for example, so noise levels are taken also into account. And, uh, and this is a very interesting development that we can provide then uh, these uh, uh, clean air routes and also quietest routes uh, for citizens. 
And then we have been looking at the environment also from the uh, networking point of view and how to how to do the sensor management uh, supported by the network. And uh, this uh, figure illustrates the environment. So we have uh, these uh, environmental sensors. Some are carried by the citizens. Some are in vehicles. Some are carried by drones. And uh, some are fixed stationary. And we have a number of networking and wireless techniques for connecting these uh, sensors. And usually we have a backend uh, that then uh, does the processing. And this is also the case for our system that we have the Megasense backend cloud uh, service. But we have also explored how to distribute this. And uh, we, have, we have used edge computing to uh, run part of the sensor management, data gathering, and also uh, machine learning uh, as well. And uh, for low-cost sensors, so edge computing is helpful when we have really very high density deployments of sensors and also uh, when we have sensors that produce a lot of data. For example, in some cases we use hyperspectral sensors and we extract pollution details from these hyperspectral images. And in these cases, edge computing uh, alleviates the uh, uh, network de demands of, of, of this uh, use case and also uh, helps in the kind of data processing aspect as well. So H uh, does have a role, but uh, it needs to be uh, analyzed that, uh, that when uh, this uh, decentralization and distribution uh, makes sense. And we have also uh, studied the scalability of uh, these different uh, environmental uh, sensing uh, use cases. And for the low cost air quality uh, sensing case, we have uh, studied uh, uh, Helsinki area that how many sensors would we need uh, given certain uh, certain uh, densities and uh, if we have 400 sensors per uh, square kilometer we would uh, need to have nine virtual machines to uh, support the data gathering and processing when we have a uh, uh, very high density deployment 10,000 sensors per square kilometer we would need to have over 200 VMs. So uh, with very high uh, density, we would need to uh, have more optimizations. Uh, we would need to rely on edge computing as well for aggregating the, the data and helping the, with the scalability. So uh, when having really uh, hundreds of VMs, we uh, need, to, need to kind of um, consider more advanced techniques for orchestrating the uh, the campaigns and the, the monitoring, uh, how uh, how the different uh, stages are then uh, implemented. And we have a lot of data available. So we have been uh, carrying out uh, different uh, experiments and we have also released uh, data sets uh, openly. So we have an NB IoT data from uh, outdoor sensors we have uh, also uh, outdoor data from uh, the campaigns where citizens have carried uh, the low-cost sensor. Uh, here we have, uh, of course, anonymized uh, the data, so, so it's uh, uh, privacy protected. And then we have indoor data from a shopping mall. And uh, this was, uh, as well as the other data sets, these were used for a, a hackathon that we organized. So uh, please uh, consider these data sets so they are openly available and we are very happy to provide more details. Thank you for listening.